3D printing has entered the world of reproduction. Bioprosthetic ovaries have been surgically implanted in mice and produced healthy pups in a Northwestern University lab. To help us break down the study and just how it all works is Monica Laronis. She's a co-lead author of the research and an assistant professor in pediatrics. She's in Chicago, and thank you very much for talking about this. Thank you, Beverly. So it really does seem to take 3D innovation to the next level in reading through this. Tell me about the material used with this 3D printer. So we used um, a gelatin, and we used um, a very specific um, engineering to be able to print this gelatin into the type of architecture that would support ovarian follicles. And this would be obvious, well, one would think very delicate because you need some rigidity, but then you need it to also be very flexible. Exactly. Um, the ovarian follicles will grow, um, expand, and ovulate um, to produce a fertilizable egg. And so that material does have to be very dynamic. So tell me how the pregnancy happened. Walk us through that. So we created this bioprosthetic ovary, which is a combination of the ovarian follicles, which is the fertilizable or potential egg cell in the center surrounded by uh, steroid supportive cells. Um, and we seeded those into the 3D printed scaffold. What we did was we removed the natural ovaries um, of the recipient mice and we replaced them with this bioprosthetic ovary. We used a special tag, um, a genetic manipulation to identify the specific eggs that would be produced from these um, bioprosthetic ovaries. And then we just mated them naturally. Um, we put these ovaries in the same spot where their natural ovaries were. And so we were able to na um, naturally mate them and they were able to produce uh, pups. So they produced pups. How, how healthy were these pups? These pups were healthy enough to be nurtured by this mom. Um, she was able to produce milk, which is another um, hormone. Uh, this process also requires hormones from the ovarian tissue, so from our virus prosthetic ovary. Uh, these pups grew to be able to either sire or um, become pregnant um, from other mice, so they were able to produce multiple generations. So tell me about next steps for this, in, and in terms of obviously it's going to take time, but application to humans. So there's, right, there's many next steps um, to implement this into humans. Uh, the first thing that we're doing at Lurie Children's is we're trying this in a larger animal model um, in my lab. And we're also uh, using a clinical grade manufacturing facility at Northwestern um, to produce these uh, 3D printed scaffolds in a way that could be uh, trans transplanted into humans. That would be clinically safe to do so. Um, so there's many steps. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's fat. Let me ask you about, because in terms of saving the population that might need ovaries replaced, I mean, it could have application for people who have had cancer or gone through cancer treatment. Exactly. Um, a, bio, a successful bioprosthetic ovary um, would benefit patients also with disorders of, of sex development um, and others in sex and gender minority groups and specifically benefit, like you said, the significant number of um, pediatric cancer patients that are at increased risk uh, to have their hormone insufficiencies uh, and difficulties getting pregnant. Are we years away from that, do you think? I think we are. Um, but I hope that, you know, if, if we meet again in five years, we'll be much closer. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a groundbreaking, you know, researched and great to be able to talk to you about it. Thank you so much. Thank you.